Hello everyone, in this video I'll be playing Green Circle TD and Reforged again, and I'll be showing you how to beat the game solo. In the last video, we ended up losing the game, and what I had noticed was, due to the way this game's income system works, if you have only one player, the same amount of money is available to you as if you had a full house. So essentially, that just means one person gets the same amount of money as all players combined, but you get full access of what you want to do with those towers. So with that in mind, that means we can execute a superior strategy and win the game. So at the start here, I'm going to build six towers, one in each corner, and then one at the side points. I'm going to make all of them into critical strike towers. Then I'm going to upgrade the critical strike tower at the top left, specifically to level 3, and the rest I'll gradually upgrade to level 2. The reason for prioritizing the top left tower is that, for whatever reason, in one player, the top left slot gets double to triple the amount of units as the other slots. So if you take a look here, we can just call this 10 guys, whereas in purple there's only 4 coming out right now. And the same thing applies to all the spawns. So you really don't need to rush the upgrades on the corners very quickly, which is why they'll usually be one to two levels behind, or even more as the game goes on. And when you're moving around the map to make towers, I strongly recommend using Blink, because that'll save you a lot of time. And the Blink cooldown is pretty much instant, so it's a non-issue. In a moment here, we're going to upgrade this Critical Strike Tower to level four. And if we wanted to, we could build one or two extra crit towers, but due to the nature of the scaling, it just ends up being better to focus on getting one big critical strike tower instead of multiple smaller ones. However, later on, I probably will still get one or two extra crit towers for at least a little while, because at certain points of the game, a lot of units can build up, and the towers, the crit tower does max out at level 10, so if we reach that, once we reach that point rather, it will be useful to have a couple extra towers just to prevent it from reaching the 700 unit limit. So yeah, to explain that further, the objective of this game is to survive for 36 waves without the total amount of units on the map ever exceeding 700. To accomplish that, you need to kill the units with your towers more quickly than they spawn. At certain points in the map, lots of units will spawn at the same time, which can pose a pretty big threat, such as right now, but we're not truly in any danger because at the end of this wave, it'll switch over to a low spawn wave, which will, like, let's see here. Yeah, the boats, and the boats spawn at about half the frequency of the previous wave, so as your towers begin to get more powerful from killing this batch of units, you'll easily be able to take them all out, and the low spawn rate of the boats will bring you back down to the lower 200s. And once you get past this point, I think it usually floats around the 2 to 300 point for most of the game. So let's take a look, see how our towers are doing. Seems like this level 4 is just about enough to handle the top left. Probably could use an extra upgrade right here, so I'll be upgrading this tower next. Also, I'll be doing another stream on this Saturday. I'll include a link to the time for the stream in the description below. So if you're interested in checking that out, you should like and subscribe to be notified when the stream will be coming on Saturday. It'll most likely be around noon. And once again, that is one of the opportunities you can have if you're interested in playing some games with me. Yeah, we could build one extra tower here if we were really concerned, but due to the tower's prices, I'm not too big of a fan of having extra towers in regions like this, because the units will ultimately just walk to the other tower zones anyway. Alright, now's probably a decent time to upgrade the bottom left and bottom right. And then after that, the top left will need another upgrade.
And so there is one other tower that you can consider getting at this point of the game. Personally, I'm not too big of a fan of it, but the single shot tower can be upgraded into the slow tower, which will slow down the rate of movement speed by 10, 20, 30, or 40 percent for around, I think it's 400 gold, 800 gold, 1200, and 2000. So you can get that, but as I explained earlier, since the units will just run around the map to your other towers, it's not too much of a need to keep them in one region by slowing them down. I might still pick that up later, but it's not particularly essential. The only reason I might end up picking it up is just because at certain points of the game, you'll end up getting so much money that the 2000 from it's unnoticeable, and the slow does help a tiny bit because it keeps them next to your strongest tower. The uh, gyro is a pretty easy wave. All the flyers have a very low amount of hit points relative to the previous ones. So this is another wave that will lower the amount of total enemies on the map significantly. For whatever reason, I've also noticed that it seems like more units tend to end up on the left side of the map than the right. I'm not sure if that's just because there's a higher probability of walking left here, but that tends to be how it works out. Four thousand for our next crit tower upgrade. And once I finish getting this tower upgrade, I'm going to place two auras up here. The reason for placing the aura towers up here is that the aura range is very large, so by putting the aura here, it gives us access to... I can't zoom out here. But it gives us access to more or less this whole region for auras, which will help us later on with uh, certain towers to take out the final waves. Actually, it could be a little bit soon for the aura. Yeah, I'll hold off on that for now. Aura 1 only gives 30% attack speed, so it's better to just invest the 1,000 of savings into a superior tower. Yeah, another really easy set of... Wa actually, wait. No, yeah, this is a wave. <laughs> this one is just so easy that I was thinking it was just remnant units wandering around the map, but that was not the case. But yeah, just to get a sense of scaling, towers usually double each time you purchase an upgrade. So going from 4 to 6 takes us times 2, which brings us to 5400, then times 2 again, which would be 10,800. We're actually slightly above that, which is why it's really valuable to upgrade towers, because it's actually a little more than double each time. In fact, it's if you were to run the numbers, it's probably something like 2 to 3 times as powerful, or like 2.5 to 3.5 times as powerful, because the range, attack speed, and damage all increase at the same time. Now I'm going to be getting critical tower number 7. Unfortunately, the 7th tower is a little bit annoying because it shoots out this big green glow. We do have to go through this upgrade to get to the superior towers, so for now I'll just try to minimize the amount of time that we have to wait on this screen. And our crit 4s are actually still sufficient for the lower volume spawns. Right, it's probably about time to upgrade this one. Upgrade finished. Okay, next upgrade is 9,000. It's going to take us another 45-ish thousand gold to get to the tower that won't have the big green glow. Upgrade finished. Probably about time to upgrade the corner towers since they are starting to leak some units out of the regions. Tower 5 should be sufficient.
and probably don't need to upgrade this one just yet because with the corner towers the corners are because of the high range they're able to hit this and this at the same time which allows them to also reduce the amount of units that the side towers have to deal with looks like we still have sufficient damage at the top left with tower 8 All right, we can upgrade these. Not needed, but it does round it out. Keep the unit count nice and low. Also, occasionally units can get stuck, so you can, if you're really concerned about having a perfect enemy count, just uh, place an extra tower next to the orange spawn. The orange spawn is the only one I've ever seen where units get stuck. It's happened pretty much every game where one unit will get stuck here. Of course, if I place the tower here now, it's just going to get absorbed by the other units, so I might do that later if I really care. So just to show off crit 9, you'll see the glow is extremely rapid. That's because the attack speed is really high now, and once we go to crit, uh, crit tower 10, the attack speed will be even better, and so will the damage. And now that I have crit 9, it's a good time to get the auras. So as I had mentioned, I'm going to get the auras over here because we want to place towers in this zone. And just to double check, let's make sure the auras hit. Damage aura. And it's good. And it's going to be 24,000 for the next tower. Looks like the corner towers are falling behind. But I'd still like to finish upgrading this one first. 4,000 to go. Yeah, okay. Even though I'd like to do that, they are building up pretty quickly in the corners. That's about right. which now means I've lost all of my progress, but units do get progressively more valuable as the game goes on, so I'll earn that money back quicker and quicker each wave. Upgrade finished. And we'll get the bottom left corner next. Upgrade finished. So to show off the tower that I was building, going to mention earlier, is for the final wave I'm going to be building a tower called the One Shot Tower, which can do one attack per seven seconds, but it is benefited by the attack speed aura tower, which is how we'll ultimately be killing the final bosses. And that's why we place the auras here. And I guess I'll just get this placement done now to save it a little bit of time later. I'm spacing them out because we, the one strike tower, if multiple shots overlap like this, then that means those attacks are wasted. So by spacing it out, it increases the probability of them attacking separate targets. And at last, we've reached the Critical Strike Tower 10, which ha has a much more mild effect that's not bad at all. And due to the strength of this tower, it's now a good time to upgrade the speed again and the damage aura, because percentage-wise, it'll be a significant boost. It'll take it from 90,000 damage to plus 50% and then plus 80%, so it's essentially getting an extra super-powered tower for half the cost or less. I'll probably be stopping at damage aura 2, though, because the damage aura 3 would be useful if our towers couldn't one-shot enemies at the end, but since they can, the damage is pointless. 
Yeah, and to the perfect tower, all of these enemies are dying instantly. And let's keep spacing this out. So, if they have the damage, they're guaranteed to have the speed, so all of these placements are fine. Not sure if we could place any on the left, but let's take a look. Looks like it's still in range, just to give you an idea of how large that aura is. Let's do one more... So, honestly, that might still be a bit too much overlap. Let's place one here. One here. And one here. Okay, that should be sufficient for pre-placement of those towers. Okay, and then we'll put two over here, which will, can be used to kill a couple of the stragglers from this region. And then the remaining cannon towers, or one-shot towers, will be placed at the other corners. I think I'm on wave... 20 now? Somewhere around there? 21, yep. And now's around the time where I will get the speed aura, but really it's practically irrelevant. And yeah, perfect slow, 40% reduction. And it, for whatever reason, also reduces attack speed, but there are zero enemies in the game that can attack. Actually, wait a minute. Plus attack speed tower 20%. Maybe I just misread that. Perhaps that increases the attack speed of our towers? Wouldn't really make sense on a slow tower. Let's uh, try this out. Just a little bit of science here. So this is in range of nothing. Now we'll place a slow tower. Okay. So apparently the slow tower improves the attack speed of friendly towers. Oh, well, I guess that does make sense when you really read it. Attack speed tower 5%. Not sure if that stacks with the speed aura. It might, though, because that would be 80% speed from the speed tower and then an additional 10% or 20% speed from the slow tower. So, my speed is now maxed out. And the next towers I will upgrade are going to be at the bottom right and bottom left. Actually, you know what? This one makes more sense. I'm going to be upgrading these to Tower 9, because at Tower 9 we can sell it for full value, whereas at Tower 10 we'll only sell for half value. And Tower 9 is a significant attack speed boost over the level below it. That should more or less handle those, and top right is next. Now let's do bottom right. I already got that to level 8. Yeah, it's around this point where the income really picks up quickly. We're now getting around, say, 1 to 2,000 gold a second. Yeah, and you can really see that by getting the superior level 9 tower, the enemy rate's going back down. I think it was up to 350, now we're at half that. Okay. So all of our side towers are maxed out, not going to be upgrading them anymore. And now we'll gradually start getting those one-shot towers. I will be placing aura towers at each corner as well, so I'll just get that done now. Speed's the only relevant one, because we'll be placing a couple one-shots here. Okay. 
Okay, so now we can get our first one-shot tower. I guess location-wise, for the first one, we can put it over here. One-shot towers get 2,000 range and 500,000 damage. However, 500,000 is actually pretty insufficient for killing them, so I would imagine anyway. So I think the true kill effect comes from this passive. So it wouldn't really matter if this was 500,000 or 1, which is why the damage aura is not important. And when you upgrade it from 1 strike kill to perfect, it'll reduce the cooldown from 7 to 3 seconds. So it's a little more than double the tower for a little more than double the price. Cost-wise, I'm not actually sure if that's worth getting, I haven't run the numbers, but it's very close either way. And these little single shot towers, they're just doing nothing. Just taking a look to check out the kill rate at all of the other zones, and it's doing just fine. Oh, actually, the perfect tower also gets an additional 1,000 range, so from 2,000 to 3,000. Yeah, this is an example of wasted shots, where some of these are shooting after the critical strike tower already kills them, completely wasting it. Next one shot will be here. I guess for now we can just uh, do the the larger variety, or not larger variety, the regular level so that we can have multiple. I think this is wave 32, so we're beginning to near the end. No, 30. Okay. And if you're concerned about the enemy count at this point, you can manually target the weaker units with your crit towers to take them out. This really only applies to the Black Dragons. Since they are not hero units, the game's auto-targeting AI doesn't prioritize them, which can lead you to have a slightly higher total enemy count than you otherwise would. But if you've made it to the Lobsters, you're pretty much fine. The lobster rate has a slower spawn than the wizards. Also place two additional one-shot towers down here.
Did I upgrade the- yeah, I did. And the Rexars are also, or I think this is Rexar. They give a ton of money. Actually, you know what? That's not definitely not Rexar. He's red. This is a custom Warcraft remodel in that case. But yeah, they give a ton of money, five thousand gold to kill, and they die pretty quickly. One more one strike kill to go. And it looks like our current quantity of one strike perfect kills is just about right because it's able to take out almost all of this wave. So if we assume that the final boss wave has the same amount of spawn count, then this means we don't really need any more towers up here. So with that in mind, we'll get some more over here. And upgrade it to max speed. I guess technically, you could also make the slow towers, because as we discovered earlier, that gives a small, possibly stacking bonus as well. So now if you want to, you can sell the Critical Strike 9 tower to get around 45,000 gold back. And we've reached the final boss. So in fact it looks like you only need 5 perfect towers to take out a full final boss wave take out this random dragon. Also, once the final boss wave starts, I'm not entirely sure why. Usually it has to do with the total amount of units on the map, but the AI for the other guys will begin to stop moving as quickly. And the reason why that doesn't make sense is because earlier we saw 600 units and it was moving just fine. Okay. Let's get some more single or er, instant kill towers. And all you have to do to win the game is survive on the final boss for around... Till then, yeah. So now we've won, and the total amount of units on the map will only decrease from this point. For fun, I might let this run for another minute or two, but that is the end of the game. So now you just have to wait for the units to slowly walk to wherever your towers are for them to die. Yeah, and this level of clumping, it really would be slightly better to space it out more. So this would probably be fully cleared in about three minutes, but since there's no reward for that, I'll stop it here. So if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing, and once again, I'll be doing a live stream on this Saturday at noon, and I'll be posting a link to that in the description. So I'll see you guys on Saturday.